Let's use CIMIC to quickly perform a thermal analysis of a particular FET design, starting from the generic FET template. The device we want to model is the dense array device described in this 1991 paper by Wright, Marks, and Decker that was given a theoretical analysis in 2005. And we'll begin by configuring the channel dimensions to match the target device. We'll set the finger width to 37.5 microns, the gate to drain distance to 0 0.85 microns, the gate length to half a micron, and the gate to source distance to 1.85 microns. Next we'll set the source lengths. We want a gate to gate spacing across the sources of 26 microns. So given the channel dimensions that we just entered, this requires a source length of 21.8 microns and similarly the drain lengths need to be set to 21.8 microns which would give us a gate-to-gate -gate spacing across the drains of 24 microns. The number of gates in the full device is 10 uh, but we're modeling uh, half the device so we'll enter 5 here. Uh, and then finally we'll um, set the source bridge to on uh, because there's an air bridge in this device. Now we want to configure the stack up to match the experiments and analysis and in, in, in the experiments analysis the temperature was fixed at the bottom of 100 microns of gallium arsenide. So what we want to do is change all the components in the stack up beneath the substrate um, to gallium arsenide. So we'll just go in and select each one from the components list and scroll through the materials uh, lists, find gallium arsenide and change them all to gallium arsenide. So now the device is uh, gallium arsenide except when we look inside we see that there's some non-gallium arsenide components in here and these are the vias from the sources in the source pad. Um, and we'll just go in and change those. So the uh, via holes, which are air, we'll make those uh, gallium arsenide. And then we'll go through and just change all the uh, via metal to gallium arsenide. Uh, one last thing we need to do is uh, change the epilayer materials uh, from algas to gallium arsenide just to make it all consistent. Now we've configured the device materials. Um, the one thing we want to do is set the material properties for gallium arsenide to match what was used in the analysis. So we'll open the materials list, uh, select gallium arsenide, open the which opens the material uh, properties dialog, and then we'll select the first row by hitting the insert key, and then we'll use the delete key to basically remove the thermal conductivity values that are there, and then just go in and enter our own values. And then once these are all entered, we can um, say OK. And then we can go back to the uh, materials list, double click on gallium arsenide again, and just check and make sure that we entered the values correctly. And when we're satisfied with that, we can move on to the uh, setting the thicknesses. So we want 100 microns of gallium arsenide. Um, so what we need to do is change the thicknesses of the layers so that we have 100 uh, microns total. So I'll just go through and enter some values here. Um, we have one micron of gallium arsenide in the epilayers, 84 microns in the substrate layer, and then 15 microns um, 
beneath that, so that gives us a total of 100 microns. Now we'll set the heat generation parameters. So we're going to do a steady state simulation with a constant on power. Uh, and that power level is going to be set at 0.8 watts per millimeter. Uh, and we'll hold the uh, backside temperature, like I said, at 130 degrees Celsius. So that would be 403.15 degrees Kelvin. And then we're going to put all the power under the gate to match what was done in the analysis. So I'm going to expand the width of segment one to basically fill under the gate um, and then um, I'm going to move all the power onto segment one so 100 percent of the power on segment one that sets up our problem and now all we have to do is say run simulation and we're off to the races so the first thing it does <clears throat> if we look at the console here uh, is it uh, does mesh generation so it based on uh, the template it generates uh, 150,000 finite elements uh, to solve this problem and then it calls the solver uh, that can actually compute a solution for that finite element problem uh, and this is going to take a couple of minutes so while that's running uh, why don't we look at the paper and see uh, what it, what measurements uh, they were actually made on this particular problem and here is here is their results for the dense array when the base was held at 130 degrees uh, Celsius uh, they used liquid crystal techniques and were able to measure the temperatures at the ends of the gates uh, and found it to be 172 degrees uh, C they couldn't measure the temperature at the hottest point which is the center of the gates because of the air bridge so at the end of the gates, we uh, would expect to see a temperature of 172 degrees Celsius. So our simulation uh, should only take a couple of minutes uh, on this machine, which is an AMD Opteron-based 64-bit system. It uses about a gigabyte of memory to solve this problem. Um, so you could do it on a 32-bit system, and it would, it would take a similar uh, amount of time. Let's look at the console again and see how we're coming. Now we're almost done. We've um, performed the uh, iterations necessary for the temperature-dependent connectivities and completed the solution, and it took 109 seconds. And then we see the solution here. So if we open the uh, under the results menu the temperature scale, um, we can change the temperature scale to Celsius and we can see that the coldest temperature in the solution is 130 degrees Celsius which is what we set for the backside temperature and the hottest temperature um, is 178.9 degrees Celsius so if we looked then on the end of the gates to see um, what kind of temperature we can just zoom in here and click in a couple of places with the center mouse button uh, and what we find is that the end of the gate is 172 degrees Celsius, which is exactly what we expected.